everyone, it's Lacey from Hooked on Owls here today with um, a little bit of a different video, something I haven't done before. It is a vlog yarn haul video, I guess we'll call it. I tried to record it on my rear camera and I know that thing has some crazy focus going on with it. I know the voice, the sound isn't as good this way, so I'm just going to try and talk a little bit louder and hope it works. If the other video works, then you won't see this one, but just in case, I'm going to record it twice. Fun. <laughs> so, now that I've made a mess with the first recording, let me see if I can get all my crap back together here. We're going to wing it this time. <laughs> so if you're seeing this one, I apologize. The last one was so much more professional because I'm very professional, as we all know. So... This weekend, on Saturday, the 14th, yesterday, um, my mother and I braved the, yet again, another Michigan storm that's been rolling through. So much fun. Um, it didn't start till a little bit after we left. It was just kind of raining when we left, and we kept watching the radar, seeing where it was going to be, how bad it was going to be, what time of day it was going to hit to see if we were going to be able to go all the way down to Ann Arbor, which is about a two-hour drive for us. And with where the storm looked like it was going to hit and when it was going to hit, we kind of figured we would really only have pretty bad weather on the way home for about the second half of the drive, maybe a little bit less. So we figured it was worth the risk, and we went. And I'm glad we did. We had to drive a little bit slower on the way home, but being from Michigan, I'm quite confident in my my winter driving. I'm going to knock on wood real quick just to, you never know. <laughs> but we had a great time, and I am so glad we didn't miss out. It was fantastic. Um, Tiffany, I wish you could have been there. You would have loved it. It was amazing. They had tons of roving wool. So I'm going to insert some pictures periodically throughout, and I will also put a few extra at the end. I'm going to go ahead and go over um, everything I bought, a couple of the shops that I stopped at, even though I may not have had a chance to get things from them. I'm going to talk about a couple of them anyway. So let's start out with, firstly, my mom and I decided, okay, let's walk around the whole thing, because we got there nice and early, like almost quarter to nine, and it didn't open until nine. So we just kind of, you know, meandered around and finished our coffees and whatever. But we decided to walk the whole thing first and then then purchase once we knew what there was and what our options would be. We made it oh, about half hour, 40 minutes in through like a first chunk of section there. And then we realized we hadn't eaten anything and we could smell the food from the fair truck that was just off to the side. So we <laughs> kind of snuck out there. But it's like quarter to ten in the morning so nobody was out there but us yet and we got amazing food their fries were so good they were like natural cut fries and I had this burger the thing was massive it was like a ten, not ten <laughs> a half pound not ten a half pound burger and all the like toppings and the lettuce and everything was so fresh it was delicious so if you ever go to the Ann Arbor Fiber Expo, get a burger from there because it was good. My mom got like a chicken croissant and she said that was really good too, but that's neither here nor there. I'm sure you're so concerned with the fair food at the Fiber Expo. <laughs> it was good though. Picture of it. See if I can put it right there. It was delicious. So then we went back in and I started walking around some more. And we ended up getting to one booth where I couldn't walk away without buying this item. My mom showed it to me and I was like, well, now I have to get it because it's crinkly. And I guess what it is. <laughs> like, I have to get this. I can't leave this behind. Just in case. Because I think she only had like four or five sets up there. So, it is from Joanna's Boutique, which she does have an Etsy um, any, any of the vendors that I talk about, if they have like an Etsy or a Facebook or an Instagram or anything that I have a social media site for, I will link below with the shop name, what I got from them, and what their information is. 
So this is Joanna's Boutique. Um, and I got some owl buttons. Get home that way. There you go. Some owl buttons. Kind of focus for a half a second. Now the focus on this one is not as good as the back camera, but the back camera gets all crazy. But they're super cute. Eight of them for only three dollars. She has, like I said, she has a Facebook. Oh, she has a Facebook. <laughs> she has a Facebook and an Etsy. So I'll pop that up below. She did also have some, um, some yarn and some like roving wool and things like that, I believe. But these buttons had to come home with me. It was the first thing I bought. I popped them right in my wallet. And I was like, yep, nope, these. These are adorable and they're coming home with me. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to make some sort of little cardigan to put them on. Because <laughs> I just love them. They need to be featured. How cute would they be on a little cardigan? Oh, be still my heart. Little hand painted buttons. So cute. So then we kept going, did all our walk around, came back through. And I'm missing my next item. There it is. It fell. My next item came from a shop called. Let me see if I can find the right card. I really should have done this better. Here's the expo. I think everything's backwards in this camera. That's kind of lame. Whatever. Um, nope, I found the thing. Came in this fun little bag. Oh, gift bag. It came from Anomalous Mind, who has an Etsy, which I'm pretty sure this one does actually show up backwards, so lame sauce. You don't want to focus either. It's foam. Oh well. This is what I got. At least you can see that. If you're super nerdy, you already know what this is. And that's why we're friends. It is Harry Potter's Deathly Hallowed symbol. Yes. And it's just this little little piece of wood. Super cute. Burnt in. I'm pretty sure it's burnt in it. Maybe painted. Let me see. Totally burnt. Burnt right into it. Fantastic. Nice lightweight progress keeper. I love it. She had tons of really cute little designs. I could have gone without the cute little hearts and designs, but this one. I need I needed a Harry Potter stitch marker like progress keeper. I'm not sure what it's gonna go on, but it's gonna go on something very soon. I left it on here to show you how prettily how prettily how prettily it was packaged. I don't think pearly a word is a word. How nice the packaging was that she sent it home with me. <sighs> sent uh, I'm just gonna stop. I'm gonna stop because words aren't working. There's that. Now with her was um mint rain hand eye yarns, which is probably probably backwards. This is dumb. <laughs> I wonder if I can do this. Where's my camera back here? Let me flip this. I can't flip it while it's going. Never mind. I'm not gonna do that. Cute little owl logo information below. She had some beautiful yarns and actually Anomalous Mine had some really gorgeous project bags. She had one, um, my dog's running in her dream and it's hilarious to watch. Hey, not on the yarn though. We'll move that. <laughs> little feeder twitching. Totally off topic. Um, she had one bag and it had this cute little flower decoration with words kind of in the middle and like a blue color. And it said like, um, I'm your mom, because I'm your mom, that's why. And I'm like, oh man, I almost got that bag. Almost. It was so close. She also had this amazing Zelda bag that had like Link with like a stone background and like the shield logo. Oh my gosh. It was really big though. And I didn't need one quite that big. If she would have had the Zelda one in a medium, I probably would have come home with that project bag. She also had like um, a Star Wars Christmas one and a Nightmare Before Christmas. And she had a really nice snowy owl one, but I just didn't want like a winter. At, at that point, I really didn't want a winter theme because we've seen so much snow this year. I can't even enjoy the pretty fluffy, fluffy white 
heavy snow. I can't enjoy it anymore. I'm done. It is the middle of April, Michigan. Get with it. Over it. Sorry. <laughs> so, after that, um, I went over to, there was another store I went to. This card has disappeared. Oh, there it is. Cute little card. It's a little card. You're not going to be able to see it. So I'm just going to do this real quick. Ah, I'll put it in from like information below. Um, it is Cat Sock Fibers LLC. She does. Dang it. I dropped a card. She um, hand dyes her own yarn, which I think that was the initial thing that drew me into her booth. Is she has some hand dyed yarn that was like black and teals. And I think when I was looking at it, she said she named it after her sister. And the yarn was called Middle Child. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a middle child, but I love the yarn. It was beautiful. She had another one called, like, My Sister's Bug, I think, because her sister's favorite color is green, and she wanted a, a beetle, a bug. A green one? I don't know. But it was cute. <laughs> she also had um, some gorgeous DPN cozies, which I'm not a fan of DPNs, but the cozies were adorable. And then she also made her own... Um, wool washes and they come in a little like a little bar just a tiny little thing she said you can get you know two to five washes depending on how much you use out of them and they're made with um, you know organic like um, I think she said coconut oil and olive oils and all sorts of awesome goodnesses so I did almost buy a couple of those but on the second trip around I almost bought them the first time, but I refrained. I'm like, I'll buy them on my second time around. And then I didn't find her booth on the second time. By the time we were done and, like, heading out, because I know she was in the back half somewhere, by the time we got back to that part the second time, it was cool, getting close to, like, 1231, and it was getting pretty busy. So I ended up missing, like, two of the booths that I wanted to go back to. I, I just, like, overlooked them or... They were, I don't know, I missed them, which sucks. But I did get her card, so at least I can look her up. Um, another one, okay, this one we're going to talk about for a minute. This is called Splash of Colors Yarn. Here's a card, which is backwards. Um, I stopped by her booth. Um, her name is Lisa. I stopped and talked to, hi Lisa. <laughs> I stopped and talked to her for a little bit the first time. The first time I think I spent the most time at her booth <laughs> talking to her about some amazing things. Um, she had a little side thing of yarns and the colors were really beautiful. Very vibrant colors. But what really drew me into her booth initially was she had on the side um, a gradient set and like teals. And with that, she had made a gray and teal striped, um, very large cowl, one you could probably wrap twice. And it was her own design, absolutely beautiful. And then she also had another one of her designs, a shawl, up hanging up, and it was purple and gray. <laughs> and as you know, if you watch the podcast, I love purple, gray, and teal, and black. And those are like my favorite colors. So, yes, I was definitely drawn into her booth right away. Her patterns are gorgeous, gorgeous, and I believe she has them for sale on Ravelry, so I will try to link her Ravelry page as well. Um, she had so many things, like so many different elements that drew me into her booth. She had some really cool self-striping yarns, and she had um, this one yarn called Cathedral. Oh my gosh, it had these beautiful jewel tone colors, and it got named Cathedral because it's very reminiscent of like a stained glass. Which, I don't think of Cathedral for stained glass, necessarily. Personally, when I think stained glass, I think of my grandparents. Because, as a hobby, my grandpa would make stained glass art. He would do big hangings or just little, like, window sun catcher ones. And my grandma would pick out the colors, and she would pick out the pattern of a design she wanted. And she would give it to him, and then he would take all the pieces and put it together and make it for her. And, ugh. 
I loved it. I love all the stained glass. So when I think of stained glass, I actually think of my grandparents. And not so much, <laughs> not so much a stained glass window. But I, I definitely understood the reference of Cathedral. Another thing of hers that really drew me in, which was hilarious, that this is her story too, pretty much. Um, Josh asked me, I'm pretty sure I talked about this before, he had asked me to make him a hat. And when I initially asked him, what color do you want? He did say the, the generic black, but then he was like, well, maybe a, you know, a camouflage one. And I'm like, well, the only camouflage yarn I know of is like Red Heart Super Saver Acrylic. And some other acrylic is nice, but the Red Heart Super Saver Camouflage Acrylic is, it feels plasticky. It's not, it's not the softest. And I'm like, that kind of defeats the purpose of me making you a hat because I want you to have a nice woolen hat so you can understand how amazing having wool is. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm never going to find a camouflage wool yarn. I was wrong. Lisa makes gorgeous camouflage wool yarn. I loved it. And the funny thing is I told her that story and she said that's pretty much the reason she started dyeing yarn in the first place was because her husband did the same thing to her. Well, you know, there's this this camouflage yarn and she's like that's acrylic which again I obviously have nothing against acrylic I do like it but it doesn't have the same quality as wool for things like when you're wearing it out hunting you want that extra warmth of the wool so she decided to hand dye her own and what she came up with is amazing it not only has the tonals of the greens but it also has little flecks of the hunter orange and then she also has skeins of just the hunter orange. It's fantastic. Not only that, she actually has the pink camouflage too. Um, I didn't buy it. I want it and I will be getting some. Lisa knows this. I will be getting some because Josh still wants me to make him like a very ski mask style for going hunting and that yarn would be literally perfect. So I didn't buy it yet. <laughs> but I thought to myself, this trip was for me. And the yarn I'm buying today is going to be for me. So that one got put on back burner. I will be going back to get some from her at some point before hunting season starts back up. But it's really cool. So I'm very excited to have found somebody that does make camouflage yarn. <laughs> um, I did end up going back and buying something from her. Something that caught my eye, and it's not in my usual colorway, which this trip I decided when I went, I'm going to buy things that are slightly out of my comfort zone. I have my go-tos of my purples and my teals and my, you know, blues and whatever, but that's all I have. I don't have anything else. So the goal was to, to find other colors to make stuff out of that I normally wouldn't I shouldn't say gravitate towards because I love all colored yarn. But something I'm going to actually craft with. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. She ended up having this little clearance bin that I kept. There was two in there that really caught my eye. Um, there was nothing wrong with the yarn. It was just, you know, basically like either like a lucky strike or a lucky draw, lucky dip, whatever you want to call it. Or something that she was working towards a certain colorway. And these weren't quite what she wanted for that colorway. But they were still good yarn. And this one caught my name. Unfortunately, the colorway is called One of a Kind No Name. Because it doesn't have one. Because it was a one of a kind. And I told her that made me very sad. That this yarn had no name. It was like a little orphan. And it needed a home. <laughs> so it came home with me. I feel like we should name it. So if you have any name recommendations for this yarn, let me know. So here it is. And the yarn, the quality is not going to show as good as it would on the back camera. And that makes me sad. Maybe if I do this. No. Gosh, I hope the back camera turns out okay. Because I don't have to use this one. Colors don't even look right. Anyway. It's got teal, orange, yellow, hot pink, purple, 
like speckles, just crazy speckles throughout it. This color here, let me show you. This one here, you can kind of see it more teal. And this is like a purple. Um, you can kind of see that it's purple. It almost looks blue right there, but it is purple. Um, and the hot pink and yellow look really orangish, but well, it's poop. <laughs> I love this color. This is super purple too, not blue. Lame. Super pretty. Um, I don't know what it's going to be yet. I'm actually thinking about that shawl I'm test knitting. The Competo. Competo shawl. I think that's how I say it. Randy from Randy's Random Ramblings and Jack both kind of gave me a, a written note written that way to say it so pronunciation that's the word I was just trying to think of <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's the Kanpeito shawl um, it is based off of the Japanese candies that are eaten by some anime characters on a show called Spirited Away I guess I don't know I haven't seen it but the colors in this do kind of remind me of those little Japanese candies so I do want to make another one of those shawls already, and I haven't even finished my first one. This might become one of those. I do think I'm going to have to use a bigger gauge, though, or a bigger needle, because I went up in needle size, and my gauge is still pretty tight. Super cute. Um, and she really did just have yarn, I believe, but she's got patterns and yarn, and her yarn is amazing. So, Lisa... Big shout out to you because, like I said, I'm pretty sure your booth was one of the ones I spent the most time at. <laughs> and thanks for the little bit of a shout out hello on uh, Instagram today. I appreciate that for as well from you. <laughs> so, next, now that I've raved about Lisa for a while, um, let's move on to the Miller Girls. Now, the Miller Girls had an end booth, huge all sorts of uh, hand dyed yarns but theirs were kind of still hanging in the like the skein was open and hanging instead of all wrapped up and pretty but it was really it was unique and it really did draw you in um, I gravitated immediately towards this gorgeous silver sparkly black with like an emeraldy teal yarn and I ended up going back for it and then I stopped and I looked at my mother and said, I have a ton of teals. I need to stop. I need, <laughs> as much as I love it, I need to get something different today. So I got this. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool on camera. Look at the sparkly, happy yarn. It's called Contest. Now, um, I did talk to one of the girls whose name, I don't know if I didn't catch or I just forgot, and I apologize. Um... They do what she called picture dyeing. I'm just going to hold it next to me because I love it. Um, this is the picture. I don't know if you that'll focus. Hmm. You know what? I'll just, I'll just take a picture and insert it. Um, it's based off this picture, and she said it's kind of a, a gothic colorway. Um, it's based off of the Countess Elizabeth Bathory de Essid. Exid? Born uh, 7th of August in 1560 and died in the August 21st of 1614. Which 21st of August is actually my son's birthday. Um, says she can easily be classified as a vampire who murdered her female victims for their blood. Her bloodlust was very real of a historical, and then it kind of cuts off. But this is the picture it's based off of. So this is based off of a very gothic vampire kind of feel and looking at it I'm sure you can see why it's beautiful I just want to sit here and look at the sparkle in this camera all day because even if it doesn't pick up the colors exactly correct that's actually it makes the colors look better <laughs> this sparkle is amazing in this camera literally sparkle fast holy crap but yeah, the colors are slightly more muted. It looks more true like up here. Um, just a nice burgundy color. 
Gosh, that's pretty. Okay. They don't have an Etsy as far as I could tell, but they just have a Facebook. So I will be sure to link their Facebook below so you can check out some of their other colorways that are just as gorgeous as that. They had one that was like light purples and pinks and another one that was like purples and blues and that just looked like sparkly unicorn hair hanging there. It was crazy. Um, before I run out of space, let's move along. So, another place I stopped was um, Twisted Fiber Art. Twisted Fiber Art. They have a lot of these gradient colors. Nice expensive gradient colored cakes. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But, I stopped there and um, up at the front of their booth. I'm going to pull this out here. This is on my uh, Campeto shawl. I hope I'm saying that right. Let's see if I can show you these real quick. I got these stitch markers. And they are just like little pieces of elastic. And they have this little metal clasp at the end of them. A couple purple ones. I ended up getting four. Because I figured that's what I need for this shawl. So <laughs> that's how many I'm going to get for now. And as you can tell, I instantly put them on because I wanted to use them. They're super cool. They're very different. They don't just like slide off like the other ones are really bad, like metal ones do. And you can, they're kind of adjustable. Like you can use them for tiny projects or you can use them for big projects and they'll just hold places a little bit better. But sneak peek on the shawl progress in case you're curious. Still looks really crazy colors, but... You can see the amazing progress I've made so far. I'm going to go work on it some more after this because I love it. I cannot wait to have this thing finished. It's going to be so pretty. So pretty. So I got, got those stitch markers from there, which I didn't see the stitch markers on their website. So I don't know if that was just like a, you know, at the show kind of thing, but... They do have some pretty yarn, so you can check that out, too. While I have this on my lap, let's go ahead and do this Striped Tangerine, who makes project bags and things like that. I think she had some charms there, too. I think those were hers, like stitch markers and progress keepers. I almost got some of those. They're really cute. Um, the Striped Tangerine. Yep. My mama bought me a project bag. I've been talking about how badly I wanted one. Now she had some really cute um, fabric. She had like Gumby and Star Trek, like old school Star Trek. And, you know, some basic bees and butterflies and things like that too. But I found this one. And out of all the other project bags, this is the one I decided to get. Do you see it though? Star Wars! <laughs> look at look at the Vaders! Oh my gosh! And the troopers! Ugh! And it's black and white. Drawstring. It's beautiful. Box bottom. This is my first official project bag, you guys. And now I understand why everybody loves them. Because as you can tell, I'm already using it. I put my shawl project in here and I just flip the Top right down, set that bad boy up, and look how much room there is though. There is so much room. I could easily fit another three skeins of yarn in there. Just got a nice little tag on Before I have like no space left. So let's finish making this quick. Project bags. I see why you are all addicted to these. After using one, I love it and I need more. <laughs> There's that. Um, next, I stopped at the Recycled Yarn Co. and I got some amazing solid lotion bar, which is now apparently stuck. There we go. Some hand lotion. It comes in a solid bar form. You just rub it on your hand like soap and rub it in. Your hands stay nice and soft. It's gorgeous. Made from organic coconut oil, shea butter, beeswax, and essential oils. Um... I'll put her link below. These are only like five bucks a ten and like three bucks for a refill. They're fantastic. Check that out. She also has like silk and cashmere and roving wool and stuff. Beautiful. Um, last. Okay. I stopped at the Northern Bee Studio. This place was huge and amazing. Um, I 
talked to Melissa, I believe, for a hot second. She was picking out colors to make the no the new Hokey Hokey Locatelli shawl. And they were like this gorgeous tulip colors, like greens and deep pinks and oh my goodness. Absolutely beautiful. Um, but they had amazing minis for the best prices. And two of them caught my eye together. These two. Yes, thank you. Look how gorgeous that is. So I got two of the colored yarn. One of this chartreuse looking color. This darker yarn that also matches. And then this white and gray yarn. Mm-hmm. Isn't that gorgeous? This phone's lack of storage space is getting on my nerves. I had originally recorded this with the back facing camera to see how the quality turned out. And the quality was beautiful, but it had this focusing issue where it was coming in and out. That's why I'm recording this way now. But I had to go back and delete it and I had, well, I had to go look at it and delete it to make room to finish recording this. But now I should have more time to blab, so. These yarns are beautiful from Northern Bee Studios. I am in love with them. I'm not normally drawn to greens, but I think they're gorgeous. And I'm slightly convinced that my boyfriend is a Slytherin. <laughs> he claims he's a Gryffindor. I'm going to make him take the test to find out for sure, but... These, very, these do make me think of Slytherin colors. I really love them. And I know they're actually my sister's colors too. But I got five of them at 80 yards each. They don't have names, which kind of stinks. But I got 400 yards total. So if you know of any projects that would use five mini skeins, like 400 yards, pop it below or send me a Ravelry notification or tag me on Instagram or something. I need some ideas. If I can't find anything, I might just have to make something myself. These are just, um, it's called their sturdy sock. It's a 80% superwash, 20% nylon. It looks like it's a two ply, which I personally, I'm not a sock person for a two ply. I like, I like it for shawls. So it's definitely going to be a shawl. But it's so pretty. It's so squishy. I love it. It's definitely be a shawl and if I can't like I said if I can't find a pattern for it I'm just gonna have to make one but I don't know that I'm that confident in my knitting to make one it will be knit because 400 yards will go a lot further with knitting than it will with crochet um, I don't know if where I put their tag Turn it backwards but again information below I hate that this one doesn't flip it around automatically it's a bunch of poo See, now that I've just deleted the other one, I actually have more space and I don't have a whole lot more to talk about. I guess I can kind of go over other random things I saw there. So, um, they did have some crazy things. I wish I would have taken a picture of a couple of them. They had fake leather made from fish skin. How crazy is that? It looked really cool. It had kind of like a snake skin look to it. It was very interesting. <laughs> um, they also had like sheepskin rugs or like a, I don't know if it was an alpaca rug. Very similar to like a bearskin rug. So controversial, I'm sure. Um, but it was really soft. <laughs> like tell Josh or tell my mom, I'm like, do you think Josh will mind if I just bring home this random sheepskin rug? And she's like, your dog's going to lay all over that. I'm like, yeah, I, w I wasn't going to buy it anyway, but it was fun. They also had a lot of very natural fibers. And when I say very natural, I mean like sheared off the sheep in the clump, thrown in a bag, and brought to the market. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. It still had dirt and everything in it. Actually, some of the roving wool we saw was so natural that it still had the dirt in it. Little pieces of hay and straw. 
But some of the little clumps that were, like, sheared right off the sheep and the goats were, like, thrown in a color bath and then put back in the bag. So they were, like, dyed, sheared bits, little globs. I'm not sure what you do with it. I'm not sure if it's, like, a felting thing. Because I did see a lot of, like, the roving yarn for felting and things like that. If you know what people do with that, let me know because I'm interested for sure. Maybe felting. I don't know. Just little curly colored clumps of... Oh my goodness, it was different. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of really cool things. A lot of baskets, handmade baskets, and a couple kits. Not too many like shawl pin vendors and things like that. Just there was a lot of hand dyed yarns, which was okay with me because they were beautiful. Um, we did see some spinning wheels. There was a whole big, one whole big vendor booth just dedicated. To spinning wheels and knitting needles and they actually sold some dyes right there at that booth and I took a picture at this one booth which I forgot to get the name of unfortunately but um they had some gorgeous yarn and I think they had some project bags and stuff too but there was this cardboard cutout there Holly <laughs> um this picture is for you and I actually just watched, um, Michelle, I think your name is from Mickey Midge. You were talking about Supernatural too. So, uh, <laughs> you'll enjoy this one as well. But I this, I totally asked the girls if I could take a picture from Ever and Holly because I knew you would love this. So I'm going to pop this picture in at the end. You'll, you will know exactly what picture it is that is meant for you. But just know that while I was there, I thought of you, and then this picture is specifically taken with you in mind. <laughs> I will pop some pictures of some of the um, some of the booths and things we saw while we were there. I didn't take that many. I was just more into the we need to get in, get our stuff, and get out and get back on the road before the storm gets too bad mindset. But we had a great time. And I absolutely loved it, and I cannot wait to go back to it in, I believe, the end of October. Um, I know there's a couple other ones that are, like, I want to say that I think I may have found one in May or June. Maybe another one in August. I can't remember. But I'm going to find as many fairly local ones as I can and go to as many as I can because it was so much fun. And seeing all the different yarns there... And getting to touch them and squeeze them and love on them. And then go back, look at prices, look at, you know, the different ones just right in front of your face. Made it a lot easier than trying to, like, go online and be like, well, I don't know what that one feels like. Is it super soft? Is it super rustic? I did see the, um, I'm going to say it totally wrong. Platalopi? Plet plet Platalopi? If you watch, um, Skein Deer. She's making this dress out of this lopi, and it comes in, like, a disc-looking thing. And the vendor that had the fish leather, <laughs> she had, like, four different colors of it. And she's like, are you familiar with it? I'm like, yeah, because Ellie from Skein Deer Knits is making a dress out of it. And she just kind of laughed at me, like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So I did inform her that that is a podcast, and... Um, I've watched it and I know all about the yarn because Ellie has thoroughly given us perfect amounts of information on this yarn. So thanks, Ellie. You made me know what I was talking about. <laughs> but it was really interesting to actually get to see it because you don't see, you don't see a lot of yarns like that around here. Um, she did say that it did come from Iceland, so it is, you know, Icelandic imported. Platelopi? Platelopi? Yeah, I can't say that. I can say Lopi. So we're just going to call it Lopi yarn. But it was really it was really cool to actually be able to handle it and feel it. And she showed us just, she's like, yeah, just rip it apart like this and then you put it back together. And I'm like, that's so cool to watch you do that. I'm such a fiber enthusiast. It's ridiculous. But it was great. It was so much fun. And I can't wait to go back. And let me go ahead and just end this before I keep saying how much I loved it. <laughs> And I'll pop some pictures in um, of a few that I did take. And thanks so much for hanging out with me and checking out all my 
awesome. Let me do one of these numbers. All my awesome <laughs> dropping it. Fiber yarny goodness that I got. My dog is sleep dreaming still. She's like running and I put my paper on her foot and she's just like shaking my paper. Do you hear it? <laughs> She's ridiculous. So yay for yarn. Yay. It's amazing. You all need to go to a fiber expo. If you have one around you, I highly recommend them. You will have an amazing time. And take a yarny friend. Somebody who's going to appreciate it and love it as much as you do. I think the only thing my mom ended up getting was a couple stitch markers. Because she's one of those, I have to have a project in mind. To know what yarn I'm going to buy for it. Where I'm like, oh look it. I can make a project out of this yarn. I'll figure out something. <laughs> so I definitely didn't get that from her. But she said, okay, well when we go again. I'm going to make sure I pick out a couple projects. So that when we go I can, I can, you know, beeline on a certain yarn that I need for that project. So. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to stop rambling about it. But go. Go get yourself some yarn at an expo because you will not regret you won't regret it, I promise you. So again, thanks for hanging out with me and listening to me blab on about the Yarn Expo. Um, I'll see you guys with our next podcast and more Cal information and all that jazz. So until then, happy crafting, guys. We'll talk to you later.